Okay, this is The Good Night by Michael Clark. <clears throat> Have you ever hated somebody so much you can taste it in the spit of your mouth? Did it taste the same as mine does as I'm racing the convertible up the pitch black lane? Like your tongues rasped against clammy metal and your salivas astringent with dirty rust. Reassuring, isn't it? That's why after I tap the code into the parting gates and park up against the stables, I aim a huge, great gob on his perfectly neat lawn. Not that he'll see it from 6,000 miles away, as I suspected. Slamming doors, halogen lights tripping on, and perhaps the whiff of revenge in my sputum alerts his canine security. A sherzo of snarls shatters the stillness, and the dogs bound from beyond the dazzling beams. I feel I'm almost going to be overpowered by their oily, feral musk. Azel! Lilf! I shout. Stop! The animals pause, recognize me, but start to circle cautiously from a distance. They're torn between familiarity and their guardian instinct. Their masters abandoned them too, probably with the gardener, presumably paid to do the feeding and the walking. But unlike me, they've yet to feel the pain of the consequences. But I can help them with that. I edge towards the house. A hound growls, bears its canines, and decides where its misplaced loyalty lies, but I'm prepared. Come here. It's only Jenny. You remember me? As the hound leaps towards me, I don't have time to judge whether it's through malevolence or misplaced trust as I thrust the blade through its breastbone. I withdraw and slash the animal across the throat, leaving it to spew blood, inky under the black sky until twitching and thrashing no longer. The other beast flees, whimpering <laughs> into the night. <laughs> I've surprised myself. I've had as much practice fumbling blades as Juliet, but finally welding one in anger. I feel powerful, in control. Something I have not felt these last ten years. And I like it. Even if it won't last much longer. As befits the other woman of such long standing, I'm used to letting myself into the property, although usually on occasion when he'd nailed the guard dogs first because he was expecting me. Not only do I have my own key, but also the codes into the alarm and my fingertips are programmed into some high-tech scanning pad. Well, what would you expect? In the English country house of the Sunday supplement businesswoman, she who's been headhunted as the female-friendly face of a Silicon Valley megacorp, she'd hardly leave the key under the door. But she had left her husband unattended and unfulfilled. Still, I guess the West Coast attracted him with such urgency that he never thought to revoke my electronic security access to his micro palace. Or maybe he thinks I'll come round to his suggestion. I head into the kitchen, knife dripping doggy blood on the floorboard. <coughs> Time for a drink, like the old days before we got down to business. I know I shouldn't in my condition, but I'm never going to need to see a medical doctor or police. I pour two glasses of red, each on either side of the table, and I replay those last two conversations. Vicky barely stays here, as it is these days, he said. And when she takes the job in California, well, she'll be away for months. And with my business depending on me popping in and out of every other theatre in the West End seven days a week, it's just six months and then we'll be filing irreconcilable differences. And as usual, when lifting himself off me after the inevitable sex, 
he mumbled something about the right role he'd heard was in the pipeline. The one I deserved. The one that would transform me into the kind of star who'd burn bright in the heavens eternal. Or at least in neon on Shaftesbury Avenue. I'll show him how I burn. Two weeks later, we meet again, staring at each other over two more glasses of wine. I told him. His reaction? He pressed a wad of banknotes into my palm and trusted that I would do the right thing. A couple of days later, I get an email saying that his agency has been bought out by some outfit in New York and his business development magic is needed on the West Coast. Darling, I don't want to go, but this is a game changer with Vicky's job in Palo Alto, but I'll be back to London every other month, and until then, we can have sex over Skype. Everyone's doing it, even the A-listers. And if you're patient, Jenny, darling, I'll look out for that perfect ball for you. But I won't be in London as often, and maybe, Jenny, maybe you should consider those complex parts for the more mature women. They might match your gravitas. <laughs> and I think, what bloody complex mature woman puts the best years of her life on hold for a man who's now offering her sex over Skype? <laughs> I beg him to stay. But the next time I see him, it's with Vicky smiling from the Golden Gate in the press release photos in the standards business pages while I'm falling asleep on the tube. Entrepreneurial Brit couple hitting the USA. He never once asked me if I did the right thing. I think I did. A knife that can so quickly and so efficiently shred a man's wardrobe to pieces or dispatch his wretched guard dog. It isn't cheap nor is the training. I climb the stairs, surprised at how I'm getting so breathless so soon. I empty the contents of his wardrobe onto his bed. Even if they are unwanted clothes he's left behind here, just like me, they'll serve a purpose, just as I did. I take my blade, glistening in the moonlight that streams through the window, and I imagine his lying, cheating heart under the breast pocket of each jacket and rip through the fabric into the mattress, duvet and pillows below. I slash our bed to shreds and while I'm cutting and tearing and slicing I'm getting angry and remembering all the false promises and the slights and the feeling of second best and I'm scaring myself at just how far I'm prepared to go to bring this bastard down but I'm still prepared and I want to do it. I lean out of the window looking at the lawn he kept so neat just like his salt and pepper hair and it clicks exactly what I need. I run down the stairs, through the kitchen, into the garage, and grab the green canister from beside the lawnmower. I loosen the cap and splash the liquid all over the floor as I run back through the house, back up into the bedroom, emptying the rest of the petrol over the pile of tattered clothes on the mutilated bed. But fumbling in my bag for a lighter offers a few seconds reflection. Maybe I should show him. Let him know what I nearly did, what I'm capable of doing, if he doesn't come back to me. Stun him into ensuring that I'm actually all right. Standing by the rich bed, I take a midnight selfie in the wardrobe mirror, one hand holding the canister and the other resting on my swollen belly. And then I open up my iPhone contacts list. 